In 1958, NASA was created, the Hope Diamond was donated to the Smithsonian, and on U Street in D.C., Ben and Virginia Ali opened up Ben's Chili Bowl. As the Ali family gets ready to celebrate the 65th anniversary on Tuesday, August 22nd, we have Miss Virginia Ali, the matriarch of Ben's Chili Bowl. How are you feeling about it all? Well, I'm just a happy old lady. <laughs> you know, in 65 years, I've experienced many many challenges, many wonderful experiences, and now I'm into another wonderful experience. Giant food stores and my children talking about franchising. Makes me very happy. You and Ben have such a love story, your late husband. Is there any advice you would give to somebody who's, you know, just in a marriage on their own or maybe is thinking about working with their spouse? You, you know, you found something in that spouse that attracted you, that you found was wonderful. And then the rest of it, you just let it be. If he's not in a good mood, you don't have to buy into that. Just stay yourself and vice versa. It will pass. Take me back to 65 years ago. Was it always going to be half smokes and chili? Or was it like maybe it would be Ben's pasta bowl or Ben's salad bowl? Was it always going to be half smokes? It was always going to be Ben's chili bowl, which included chili. Mm -hmm. And half smoke was really a breakfast sausage, but we thought it would be great in a hot dog bun, a nice steamed hot dog bun with mustard, onions, and chili. And it turned out to be the number one seller, still is today. It's the DC's signature dish. Would you share the story, you shared it on my podcast, of how you and Ben met and how he asked you out on a date? Well, I was working at the bank. Ben was working in the community, and I had never seen him, but he came to, my, came to the bank. I served him. Then he came back the following day. I served him again. Finding reasons to come back to Industrial Bank. I guess so. <laughs> and then this time he had the nerve to leave a little note. Please call me with his phone number and signed at Ben Alley. Well, that was 1950, late 56. You don't call a man you don't know, not a lady. And so, that was a bank. You can't slide tellers' notes in a bank. <laughs> They're going to think something totally different's happening. Well, well, he did send me that note. But I thought, okay, he's really cute, but I'm not calling him. Not doing that. Not ladylike to do mm -hmm. such a thing. Reasonable. He called the bank and asked for me by name, because we all had our names in the window. Hi, this is Ben Alley. Why didn't you call me? <laughs> I don't know you, sir. <laughs> oh, what would you like to know? And before I could respond, he rattled off his entire life for me. I thought, we know the same people. Yeah. I can give him my home phone number. <laughs> I love his energy. He was pretty sure of himself. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a very shrewd business person. You grew up on a farm in Virginia. Yes, my dad had a 350-acre farm right 100 miles south of here. Is that where you learned about hospitality and, and how to treat people? Of course. It was a beautiful way to grow up to treat people the way you would like to be treated. It's not rocket science, it's just a way of life. When I came to Washington, and my first job was at Industrial Bank, it's when I realized how much I enjoyed interacting with different people every day. So when I met Ben, fell in love, and he said, would you be willing to partner with me in opening a little restaurant? <gasps> More people! What made you stay in D.C. all these years? Well, you know, when the, after the, I call it the uprising, mm -hmm. after Dr. King was assassinated, it was a really difficult time for, for me in particular because I worked at the bank. I'd been in this beautiful, classy, proud community. And then the community is literally destroyed. That was scary. That was really scary. Because you're hearing bricks going through windows and Molotov cocktails, and you're seeing fires. Nobody touched Ben's. We'd been there 10 years by that time. We had been readily accepted by that wonderful community. We managed to pull through. Many years later, the subway was being constructed. So, so they, they dug just... up the entire street, that big, wide, what we used to call Black Broadway. Yeah. They dug up the whole thing, 65 feet down. Right in front, you could have, right in front you could look down the hole from the front window. Absolutely. So I had the contractor put signs up, turn down the alley, and then if there were three cars in the alley, 
the one in front would have to wait till the other two had reversed out. The half smoke's worth it. Yeah, oh, yeah, the half smoke. <laughs> they said, I need my fix. <laughs> If you look to around bends, there's Ben Ali Way, and you have you know the mural on the side of the wall where you've got our Jim Vance up there and so many incredibly important people. What's the honor that Benz has received that really surprised you? The first big one was when my son said to me, Mom, you've been here 40 years. I think we should have a press conference. We should have a party. The secret to success is finding a niche and filling it. If you find a need and fill the need, you'll be successful. People were there in line to come into the Chili Bowl until 3 o'clock in the morning when we closed. It's amazing. And I'm thinking, oh, we really mean something to this community. It really touched me more than anything. Is there any advice that if you could go back to give to Virginia in 1958, <laughs> what would you tell her? I've had a pretty good life. I'm not so sure I changed too much of it. You told me once that Dr. Martin Luther King was a regular when he was planning the March on Washington. Yes, that was 1963. He had a little satellite office around the corner. He'd come by the chili bowl and sit there and have his chili cheeseburger and I get to talk to him. And I remember he told me one story that he and young John Lewis at the time, A. Philip Randolph, a few other people, met with President Kennedy. He said, President Kennedy said, Dr. King, we're going to do all we can to help you, but I don't think it's a good idea to bring a large number of people here. President Kennedy said that. Yes, yeah. he said, because if there's an incident, it will d disrupt your movement. Dr. King said, there won't be an incident. He, and he don't, you know what happened? He brought 250,000 people here without a single incident. Yeah. And as Dr. King was sitting in the chili bowl telling you this, did you know at that moment how special it would be or was it years later that you look back and you're like, wow? Well, I think I knew how special it was when I went to that march on Washington, which is 60 years ago, to see a sea of people, all colors, all descriptions, all ages, there to help us protest the injustices of African Americans. That was a very special day. Talking with Dr. King about the March on Washington to the first black president coming into your doors. It was absolutely a, an amazing experience for me, having lived during, I think I've lived in the best of times. I really do. It was like, I don't know, maybe 10 days before the inauguration, he just moved to town. And the very first place he went to have something to eat was at Ben's Chili Bowl on a Saturday, which we're always busy. <laughs> we don't know what's going on, but the Secret Service comes in, and next thing you know, here comes President Obama. What did you and President Obama talk about when he came in? Talk about how happy I was to see him and to be a part of this, because at my age, I didn't expect to ever see that. Never. So it was just a thrilling experience. How do you stay so positive? Grew up in the country. <laughs> we smiled a lot. We were kind to each other and we treat people the way we'd like to be treated. And the glass, my dad used to say, the glass is always half full. Words to live by. Virginia Ali, thank you for spending some time with us today. My pleasure, thank you. A national treasure, true national treasure, Virginia Ali. They're planning a big celebration on the 22nd at Ben's for the 65th. You'll have to come back and see us in December for your 90th? Yes. Perfect. After that, you'll have to do it every year until I'm 100, okay? Sounds great. Okay. Put it on the calendar. I, I've got nothing that day. I'm, I'm in. <laughs>